So, bro, so I mean, tell me a little bit about yourself and then let me know how I can help you. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, I'm a videographer, obviously. I do more video than photo. I do some photography for, for brands. I don't do any wedding photography. Um, so, with that in mind, I do wedding videography and commercial work, right? So, anything for brands and nonprofits. Weddings is about 60% of my revenue, and then the rest is um, commercial work. So, um, what I would like to kind of pick your brain on is just the commercial side. And it seems like that's what you focus more on and getting those corporate clients. And, and then with that workflows, I feel like with weddings, um, I have a really good workflow down from when they inquire with me, sending them a proposal, con <coughs> contracts, um, all the way through shooting the wedding and delivery and getting review and everything, but with corporate clients, one, I don't get consistent inquiries without like kind of seeking that out myself or a referral. Um, and then when I do get them, it's like the workflow is kind of arbitrary and I don't feel like I have a clear workflow in place. So that's kind of what I wanted to, to talk with you about. It's like one, how do you get more consistent corporate work? And then um, kind of what are your workflows with that? What do you, like, what advice do you have for me with, with getting that stuff in place? All right. So let's start with the first one. Um, how are you currently finding corporate time? Uh, okay. So I have, um, I, I briefly mentioned this on the phone the other day, but I have one retainer client um, where they pay me a lump sum every month. And there's a certain deliverables that I deliver. And that like is a pretty significant portion of my like corporate work. Um, so with that, like, outside, okay, sorry. Just to clarify, like my corporate clients are not um, like a dentist office or something like that. I do a lot of work in like the outdoor industry with fishing um, mostly. That's like most of my clients. So um, like fishing rod companies and then fishing apparel. And then like I'm working with a company right now that's going to be kind of more of a uh, like one-stop shop for a different a bunch of different outdoor brands like an e-commerce store yeah um, and all that stuff is just referral based so like it started with the one company that I have on retainer and then I uh, just through social media other people seeing that and reaching out and then um, I have one buddy who does marketing for some different fishing apparel brands so like he would refer me if he needed content and stuff like that so it's mainly just like referral based at this point. Gotcha. So are you, would you want to niche down to the outdoor market or like, what is it? Not necessarily. Okay. Yeah. But, but like, you know, that's tough because you do kind of have to have a niche, right? Unless yeah, I'm no, wrong. Like, no, it's not, you know, I've done a lot of different things over the period of time, but it's like, it's a lot easier it's so like I started writing a lot of copy recently towards dentists and that made it so much easier when I knew that I was talking to a dentist, right? Because like right. changing the words of business owner to running a practice, changing the words from, you know, customer to a patient, you're really talking to that very specific person, which makes your marketing in the end just overall way more easier. And, you know, if you already have a portfolio with, you know, doing outdoor stuff it just makes it easier for you to keep pursuing those type of clients end up getting bigger corporate clients in that field it all comes down you know if you're still in the phase of like hey i'm not sure if that's what i want to do then you know it's just a different conversation but i was just curious if that if that was you know a route that you're trying to pursue or not yeah i mean i think if if i could that would be awesome but like i feel like where i struggle with that is it's pretty competitive in terms of like production quality and stuff in that industry. Like there's a lot of people, um, like I, I have some people that are kind of like mentors in that, in that field, not in any structured way, but like that I can kind of call on and ask some questions and stuff. And the one dude, you know, his, his products are starting at like 70 grand Damn. for the, for these companies, you know, but they're like massive companies like Yeti coolers and Sims and stuff like that. So it's like, I can't, compete with that like where i'm at right now um so I, I don't know it's like i feel like i'm just wanting to have stuff that has easier turnover which i feel like 
a brand video for a business is like an easier turnover than like a mini doc or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So why are you yeah. looking for the easier turnover? Or are you just trying to do more volume? Yeah, I guess. So I mean, so it's like you know, your your buddy does one seventy thousand dollar project for Yeti. Right. Do you think he'd rather do seventy one thousand? dollar projects or you'd rather do one seventy thousand dollar project i mean one seventy thousand dollar project for sure so like in the sense so i'm just trying to figure out like you know what is clean because like here's the thing you no know, there is yeti but there's a lot of different companies that do have yeah. five thousand dollars for project or ten thousand dollars for project and that's where I, that's the range that i like to be at for the things that we do right um, well i guess i'm having trouble getting into that that price range even like right now if a fishing rod company reaches out like hey we need you know a 60 second video half day shoot whatever like i'm charging a thousand bucks for that mm -hmm. maybe 1500 at most and it's like that's where it becomes hard to keep up with that because although that, like that is a lot of money it's hard to like if you're trying to hit 10k months every month like it's hard to keep that going you know what i mean which is where weddings come in and help because those are like higher budget for me, but I'm struggling to like up the price with businesses and like show the value there. So you're charging way more for weddings than you are for business videos. Yeah. So, and I had a, for me, that was really funny too, because I, I, I always tell people it's funny because business owners need video. They don't want video. Brides want videos. They don't need videos. But selling to their wants is a lot easier than selling to somebody's needs. So when you figure out, um, you know, how to get to the wants of a business owner, and that's what we end up selling them is not so much in the video, but what is their wanted state of like, what is the result that they want from the video? Because we're never, we're never really shooting a video. We're trying to help them get a business result. And that's yeah. where I try to, you know, sell them on. So what is your production day rate for corporate stuff? So my half day rate's 400 and the full day rate's 800. Okay. So you should change that because right now your, your rate, you're, you're rating yourself at a hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like your work, what I've seen, you, you, you need to, I charge 200 an hour and I don't see a reason why you couldn't be charging that. So like for me, when I tell a client, Hey, it's 200 bucks an hour. You're going to get me and another guy, depending on the shoot. Um, and you know, full day rate is 1600 bucks. And then I charge the editing on top of that. Um, and you know, there's a the pre-production and stuff like that. And it all depends on what the clients are you working with. But I just think for any business stuff that you're doing, like you need to at least be at the 150 to $200 an hour. I know people that do, I would say, less quality work they mean they charge 250 to 300 dollars an hour for really uh, yeah yeah um so you know in the sense of like you're trying to figure out what with the corporate stuff with working with other corporate brands ways that we've gotten in the door to a lot of people is working with marketing agencies that specialize within a certain market and uh, you know what we did at first is we created a spec commercial that we pitched to this agency. You're like, hey, listen, if you ever have projects, these are our rates. We give a 10% commission and all the projects that you send us. And uh, we'll love to work with you. I, I see that you guys don't do video production. If you guys are ever looking for partnership, um, you know, I'll love to be that person for you guys. And because I'm feeling very generous, I'll love to even just like a commercial for one of your clients for free just so I can help start building a relationship. Yeah. Um, I'm really big on doing free work to get my foot in the door with people. Yeah. Uh, just because like, what else am I gonna do, right? Like if I don't have the expertise or I don't have the certain you know product to show somebody, I'm willing to do something for cheaper to be able to get my foot in the door with somebody else. So like this brown commercial that I'm gonna shoot this week on Thursday, I'm charging them two grand i pitched them on like three different prices they actually came back and were like hey we don't like any of those prices we have two thousand dollars i was like that's way less i was gonna charge them 
1500 just to do the treatment and come in as a producer for the day. And they're like, hey, we want to work with you, but the most we can do is two grand, and that's for you to shoot the project. And I was like, hey, listen, normally I would not do this, but I like the project that you guys are going to be working on. Um, I really like what your brand's about, and I wanted to add something like this to my reel. Um, so I'm willing to work with you guys on this project, but I also like to get a video testimonial from you guys um, during the shoot as well, so I can use this marketing, marketing collateral. And they were like, all right, like we could do that. Yeah. So in a sense, you know, if it was another business, I possibly wouldn't do it. But, and there's a, I think there's a fine line with, you know, who you end up working with. Brown is a huge distribution company that has ties to a lot bigger, you know, breweries. Like, you know, I, I got to walk through their facility and they get to work with a lot big beer brands, right? Yeah. If I could do a big commercial for them, there's a leverage of the brown name associated with a really good quality video I can create for them that I can show that to other people. And that could easily be, you know, a five to 10 or $15,000 project, but no one knows that I only charged them two grand to shoot that. Right. So, you know, compared to the mom and pop shop that would be like, Hey, I got 500 bucks for a video. And I'm just like, yeah, that's not going to work. Like for me to do, a $500 video for you just doesn't make sense for, for me. Like I can't leverage that relationship. Like I can with Brown. Um, so like, I don't know what your portfolio looks like, but I'll try to leverage that to start getting a two to $3,000, um, you know, shoot for a video. But yeah. that's the other thing too. It's like realizing the easy sell for me with dentists is that, Hey, if somebody comes here and they get, you know, a root canal, and one person watches this video and it's five, like, let's say I charge you $3,000. You charge 500 bucks for a root canal or an extraction, whatever, you know, with six people see this video throughout the year, you made your money back. Yeah. You know what I mean, so that's the easy way for them to realize the price that they're spending to, to justify what the cost is. Right. Um, that's kind of the way that I approach it. And that's where you kind of have to figure out when you're talking to these brands, you know, if they're like, hey, I want a video, I only have a thousand bucks. I'm like, what? That's very like learning strategy, like learning like from channels like the future. And you're like, hey, why is it that you want this video? And, you know, there are points of I've lost jobs because I ask questions like this. But then those jobs, you end up saving yourself a headache because like for any business owner to only want to spend a thousand dollars to solve a business problem. It's not that big of a business problem that they're trying to solve. And if you could talk to somebody and actually have an educated conversation with them about what is the strategy that we're trying to solve here, you're going to see the value of what is it that you're doing. So it's like, hey, you know, I'm trying to create this video because, you know, we're trying to sell more coolers. I would just do like the sports thing, right? So like, you know, our normal coolers sell for 200 bucks. We're trying to increase sales by 5%. Okay, so what is 5% gonna look like for your company throughout the year? Well, an extra 5%, it's gonna be like $250,000 for our business. Wow, $250,000 is a lot of money. So right now what you're telling me is that you wanna spend $1,000 to create a video that's gonna generate $250,000. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, that doesn't make sense, right? right. Like, how is it like, tell me where can you spend $1,000 to make 250? So like, don't like normally what they say, you, you want to spend at least, you know, 10% of what, you know, you're looking to invest into making the return. Luckily for you, I'm not going to charge you 10%. I could do this for around $5,000. Yeah. You know, you're helping them visualize and kind of solve that problem. But it's one of those things like when somebody comes at me like, Hey, I have a thousand dollars for business that you have like, Spend a thousand dollars on running ads or doing anything else, but a thousand dollars for a business video is not going to solve your business problem. Right. Um, you know, and there are different situations, right? Like right now we're pitching a thousand dollar, uh, COVID, uh, like safety videos for a lot of businesses. And you know, it's not that big of a business problem in the sense that they're solving, but it's more of like, Hey, it's peace of mind that you're providing to your, to your patients or customers or clients but it's a really easy for me to create cash flow for my business. And that's right, right now with everything that's happening, you know, I am taking on lower paying jobs because I want to inject cash flow into my business. So 
me going out to shoot a video within, you know, having it done within two to three hours, two hours is really what we've been doing and be able to edit, you know, within two hours, like in four hours, I'm making a thousand dollars, you know, that's, you know, let's call it $200 an hour if it's a five hour job. That's, that makes sense for me, right? right. So I want to say it doesn't take a lot of time and thought into the whole process, but dealing with, you know, a project like you're talking about, we're shooting something for a cooler, we got to figure out locations, we got to cast models, all these different things. The production aspect of that, at the end of the day, $1,000 is not a lot of money, even if you're only charging for the, for the actual shoot day, but all the pre-production that goes into it is not being accounted for. So that's where I think you need to start you know, trying to sell them on so much of like, I'm going to give you a, a price for the overall project to, that includes everything that we're going to do for you versus just trying to price out a half day shoot. I only give, yeah. I only give out like my half day or full day rates if they ask for it. Usually I, I ask them like, hey, what is that you want to do? And I'm going to give you a price based on that. And if they need a breakdown, then I'll let them know of like what that breakdown looks like. Right. Well, like the the half day full day thing like this one client i'm working with right now they it's kind of arbitrary like they're not arbitrary but like they don't know how many days of shooting they're going to need for this one video right so like that's where i'm like okay well this is my half and full day rate based on how many days we do like you're looking at this much total um so that's kind of like where i break that down if it's just like one 60 second video i'm not telling them it's this much for the half day this much per 60 seconds or whatever it's just like this is the project rate but um going back to the to the brown thing if you wouldn't mind like what's your process like they reach out to you for a video what's your process of like going through that with them yeah so with the brown thing the way i actually recorded my i'll, I'll share this with you i'm gonna put it up yeah. on my channel but i actually um i actually recorded my first phone call with them when she called me when i spoke to her the first time i actually recorded the whole call because i wanted to show people what that process is like oh awesome um but um, so I got the brown because of someone that I know. Um, they, I worked with the, like an, a local influencer that knew the marketing person for brown and they plugged me in. Um, so when brown called me, uh, pretty much just, I had a conversation. I don't talk. So here's another good rule is if I'm talking to a business owner, I talk about money right away. You don't talk about money right away? No, I, I talk about money right away. Okay. So if a business owner calls me, I'm going to ask them right away, like, hey, what is it like that you're looking to do? Like, hey, I'm trying to do, uh, like, a two-minute video for my dental practice. Like, great. Videos like that are normally between five to $3,000. Is that within your budget? And they'd be like, oh, no, I was thinking, like, two grand. I was like, okay, for two grand, I could probably do a, a minute video. And does that work with you? And they'd be like, okay, I could do that. Great. Now with Brown, when I started talking to her, I got into, because I knew she was a marketing director, I was like, I was like, hey, what is it you want to do? Tell me about what your vision is. So I let her just kind of tell everything for me because in that sense, her being a marketing director, like she has to be making anywhere between, you know, call it 60 to 100 grand working for this business. So they do have a budget that they actually spent towards marketing. Even though this was a last minute production that they were planning on, I let her get into the details. What is the vision? What is the sample video that, like, what is your inspiration? So they sent me this video. The video they sent me was like, probably, it's probably like a, you know, a $200,000 production that they sent me. And I was uh -huh. like, oh wow, multiple locations, like great. And I was like, hey, listen, we could do something like that in a smaller scale. And they'll be between like, you know, I was like, and I asked them like, what is your budget? And I was getting like, oh, like, I really don't know our budgets for first time. And I was like, hey, listen, was like, you know, I can make your video for $20,000. I can make your video for 15 or 10. It's really up to you. Like, where's the ballpark that you're at? And then she told me, she's like, hey, well, we usually get normal price, normal or normal pricing. We asked for vendors, there's like three different pricing. But we're more between that five to ten thousand dollar range. So I was like, all right, cool. So the reason I did that is just to find out, um, you know, what because I don't want to send a proposal that they're going to get sticker shock on, and because like yeah. you always want to have a conversation with them beforehand of how much the money is before you put it on paper. 
So when I send her the the email at the price, she's not gonna be sticker shocked. Um, I should show you what I sent her. So do you create custom proposals for every client? Yeah, I want to make myself stand awesome. out to them, you know, like because everybody else is sending them a proposal on a PDF or whatever the situation is. I sent her a quick email with something like this. They're like, holy shit, this is going to stand out versus anybody yeah. else that, you know, what they're doing. Um, and then, so do you just, like, if you get a new client um, or, like, you're setting a proposal, you just duplicate this proposal and kind of use this as a template and then just, like, yeah, play, play? Exactly, template. I have that. So, like, I've done this for the other one. But this has just been a template that I've been using to close, like, a lot of the deals. And then I write down, so, like, the other thing I started doing is I have like a spreadsheet of like projects closed and not closed. And then like sometimes I'll try things different. And you know, honestly, with like the smaller projects, I don't use like if it's a project under like two grand or something like that, I might not do this because most of the time I'm talking to, you know, a business owner with right. the marketing, same thing with this project. I was dealing with the marketing director, right? So I know she's gonna have to present this to somebody else. So this is a lot easier for her to present to somebody or to a board or to the owner versus sending them a PDF with the project proposal. Yeah. But we'll do stuff like this and then I'll use Canva and I'll create like a mood board. But that's only after like the next so like after I showed them the um do you use Canva? Yeah. Yeah. So like after, you know, we got the deal, I created a video treatment on Canva to send them like, you know, what my ideas were like are like the different shots and mood of what we're trying to do and stuff like that. Um, but like anything that we could just do to like, you know, show the client, like, you know, we're investing into, um, you know, the actual production itself. Yeah. What's, um, so what's your process like? if they do hire you to like storyboard and mood board, like how are you coming up with that? Are you just going off of stuff you guys have talked about and inspiration from them? And yeah. So when I first talk to them, you know, so like that's it. Like whenever you have a conversations with the clients, I use Trello. Um, I'm sure my yeah. board, do you use Trello? No, I don't. So like Trello, I have on my boards, which have like my prospects here, my contracts, planning, scripting, shooting revisions or the projects that work on revisions or projects that waiting for in payment. So when I'm talking to somebody, so this one here, I pretty much, as I talk to the guy, I pretty much take notes on here of like, what we talked about, what was the pricing of the project? I leave that in the description. And then like, every time I have a conversation with the guy, I'll make notes on here about, um, you know, what is it we discussed? So like, you know, with them, they wanted me to lower the price because, you know, when I quoted them, I thought it was going to be like 17 videos. It was going to be, you know, $9,000. And they're like, hey, we're, we don't need all the videos anymore. We only need like, you know, the main presentation and we need like two days to do whatever. So then I came back up here and I updated my pricing just so, because like, you know, your, your email, I hate having like a cluttered email box. So at least here, I've been in situations that we're having conversations back and forth over email. And then, you know, I delete the email for some reason. Now I need to find that thing. I don't remember exactly what I talked to a client about. So using Trello, I'll keep notes and everything that we're talking about. So like, same thing here is like, I'm like, I was having a meeting with him. And then every time he's telling me something, I'll just make a quick note on here. So I have all these things in one place. Cool. Um, and yeah. that's how you go to like into storyboarding and mood boarding from there. So yeah, so correct. So from here, the next thing I do, I go to uh, either go to YouTube and I start like, you know, I'll go to YouTube and now like, you know, I'll put for that one. I was doing like, you know, I'll start off with beer, like, you know, recent search beer distribution commercials and start looking up to see, you know, Okay. shots what people are what are they using and stuff like that what are like about certain things and then the other one that i go that i like is um ispot.tv this is a really good resource um and then the same thing i did like you know beer or, or that right 
and then here they'll like you know have a bunch of like spots that come up and then you can like look by the different beers and stuff like that so like cool. thing i was looking for dentists i just put dentists in there and then you know and start seeing what is it that people have so that's i spot tv that's i yeah i spot dot tv well that's a good resource yeah and then the next thing so like after i kind of have an idea of what we're gonna do i'll start working on a script i'll set the script do you have them do you have them write the script first and then you revise or is it or do you write scripts it works some clients send me scripts and then we revise them other clients need us to write the script so when we do write the script i always tell them like what is it like that's where the whole strategy comes along because um what happens is you know when you let the client write the script like the initial script for brown was like a two minute video and i was like hey yeah. 30 second video it's max 70 words like yeah. the less the better but like yeah. what is it the main message that we're trying to convey here because i get it you want to talk about your brand you want to talk about all these different things here but at the end of the day the consumer can only retain so much amount of information. What is the main point that you want somebody to leave the commercial knowing? And like we want to that we care about our local breweries. Okay, so this is gonna be the focus of what we are doing for this commercial. So when we write this script, let's make sure that everything we're talking about adds value to the point that we're trying to, you know, uh, relate on. Uh, because you know people we have another client that like every time he talks about his brand he's like we have these features and this and, that. and i'm like you're talking about yourself the whole time like you're not talking to your audience they i get it that your product has all these features but it doesn't necessarily make their lives better so like let's rewrite this and you know let's focus on the pain points of like how this benefits them not so much on the features of your product because at the end of the day, like, you know, the features on a Mercedes Benz versus the BMW, all the same shit, right? But it's important, <laughs> like, how does Mercedes Benz makes you feel versus the BMW? And that's what they really sell, they, they sell you on. Like, the experience of Mercedes Benz, you know, it's very classy, luxurious, where BMW is the ultimate driving machine. It's an electric car that's meant to be driven fast, and you feel like a badass in it. So like yeah. they tell you on like all wheel drive technology and da, da 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 you know, then Tesla is a little bit different because they're a very different car company. But like, you know, when you look at any other piece of advertisement, they stick to one core message per video. And that's really like, hey, if you want to have multiple messages, make multiple videos because um, Donald Miller has a really great saying of like, every time like you put out a piece of content or you're trying to do a video, like, Think of it as bowling, bowling balls that you're throwing at people. There's only so many bowling balls that people can catch or hold. And if you're trying to throw all these different bowling balls on them, at the end of the day, if you try to throw too many, they're just going to drop them all. It's a lot easier for you to throw one bowling ball at a person and then capture that and hold on to that one certain feeling. But if you're yeah. trying to like layer this in with multiple things, it's not, it's not going to be as effective. It's like the whole, um, like... Everybody likes vanilla, right? But if, you know, if you make a commercial that's about mint chocolate chip, people that love mint chocolate chip is going to eat that shit up because they're obsessed. It's like, I hate mint chocolate chip. But, like, I used to date a girl that loved mint chocolate chip, and it feels like mint chocolate chip Kit Kat or mint chocolate chip ice cream, whatever it is. Like, if she saw it, she would buy that shit. Because like, you know, that's what spoke to her. But vanilla, it's just, like, I can give vanilla any, like, I'll buy vanilla. I'm not religious to a vanilla ice cream brand. I'll like, see vanilla ice cream, like, okay, that's great. I'll buy it. Like, I, I don't yeah. know. But with people, with, like, if you get very specific to one message and what it's about, it just makes it a lot easier for you to convert with that customer. Right. That's awesome, man. Um, in terms of writing scripts, like, is that something you feel like you've just developed the ability to do over time? Because I feel like I'm not a good writer. So, like, if I'm faced with writing a script, like, I feel like it just turns out kind of corny. And it's like, no, that's not really what I wanted for this, you know? Yeah, I mean, the best way to do it is um, look at what other people are doing. And, like, so I just wrote three – I just I, we just did that video for um, – for the city of Hollywood 
And the script that we got, I'm personally not a big fan of, so I ended up writing my own script. And the way that I did it, I went to iSpot.tv and I was like, okay, who are like, let me start doing research. So I found some like videos of like Travel Utah, Travel Vermont, and these are like high production like commercials, right? Yeah. Way bigger than what we're doing. And I know, so like their script had a certain flow to it. And all I do, like, okay, what is the structure of what they, normally what I'll do, honestly, I'll write down their whole script I'll like put it on the Google Drive or notes, and then I'll just start rewriting it. Okay. Yeah, so like I don't I don't want to reinvent. Steal the like an artist. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. So like yeah. um, I think the one that we we got was from like Visit Vermont, but like you know they're they're just the way they're talking about certain things. They're talking about Vermont. I'm like, hey, how can I apply this to going to the beach in Hollywood? Yeah. So, you know, I just you know massage the script to fit what I was looking for, and the other way that you can do this is. It's a lot easier when you are charging more money for the projects because like when we do have a five or six thousand dollar project, I will go to Upwork and I'll find somebody that writes scripts. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? But you know, I have the budget to do that. Right. Um, and the occasions that I don't have the budget to do that, I will look at somebody else, see what they have done, like look at different projects of that style. What are all these videos? have in common what is the structure that they use what what is it that i'm missing in my script to do that yeah okay cool man it's really like, helpful all right there's another book that this one was pretty good and it's honestly they just practice but like understanding a little bit of copywriting so this one is uh how to write copy that sells yeah, write that down. Uh, you know, like this is like, it just helps overall for like, you know, working on your own website, but like having an understanding of like the psychology of like, what is it that we need to write down to get people to like buy? Yeah. Um, you know, that just helps with having a better understanding of the different parts of, you know, marketing and psychology just makes it, you know, for you. but it comes to practice because that's yeah. from my, Older scripts are not as good as the one we're doing now, but it's like, look at what somebody else is doing that's worth and then, you know, apply that to yourself. Right. That's good. So your general workflow, someone reaches out to you, you get on the phone. If it's the business owner, you talk about price right away. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you uh, send the proposal through your website. Yeah. I'll and, do it. Uh, oh, yeah. So like we talk, I'll do an email first of like, hey, just want to confirm that, you know, like, hey, John, great talking to you today. Just want to confirm that if we put together a project proposal for you for around $3,000, that fits within you guys' budget. And they're like, yes, okay, great. And then I'll do it. So you don't waste time. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right. Like, hey, no, 3000 was a lot. Then I'm like, okay, so then what were you thinking? Um, right. So then like, so then I'll do that proposal I send that out to them. Are you using any software? For sending out proposals? Emails. Try no. emails. Yeah, so like I use... Um, you use HubSpot, don't you? Yeah, I use HubSpot. They have a free version. There's a lot of different ones that people use. Uh, but like able to know when your clients are opening your emails is huge. Yeah. You know I mean? So like if I have a client that I see opening my email three times and clicking on the links, I'd be like, I'd be like, hey, John, what's up? How's it going today? But like, oh, hey, Rodrigo, I was actually just looking at your proposal. I'm like, oh, awesome. Well, any questions that I can answer for you? Um, or, if you know, <laughs> or if you like, you see them open your emails and you call them and you're like, hey, I just want to see how the proposal, if you had a chance to look at the proposal. Oh, we haven't had a chance to look at it yet. I'm like, okay, that's cool. But you know, internally, I know that they had a chance to look at the proposal. It allows me to not wonder if they got it or not. Yeah. He lets me know, okay, well, he's telling me he didn't read it and obviously I know that he did. There might be something there that he might not be ready to move. Like, I might give him another day. So the next yeah. time I come up, like, hey, I want to find out if you had a chance. Yeah. Like, is there, a, is there something that's holding you guys back, you know, from moving on and stuff like that? But it just allows you to be more prepared with, on, with talking to the client. So well, what um what software do you use for that? HubSpot. That is HubSpot. Yeah, and there's a lot yeah. of free ones. You know what I like about HubSpot is that you know it, it 
the way that I use HubSpot, the plan that I got, it allows me to do like my booking on my website. So you can like book a time to you know, call with me on the website. It does the email tracking. I could set up uh, like a email drip funnel through it. So there's a lot of different things uh, that it offers for me. And so, I mean, I got it at, before it like jumped up the price. So like it works out logically for me, but there's other versions that you can do it that's for free that they'll limit you to like 200 tracked emails a month or something like that. Oh, cool. It all depends, like, you know, what works for you. For me, I bought it after, you know, there was like two or three months, and every month I would max out my 200 email tracking. And I was like, okay, I really do need this software. Like, my sister she doesn't have the paid version of it. Um, so, like, you know, with her, I'd tell her, like, hey, only track the emails when we send out like deposits and agreements for clients. Track those emails so we know when they're open. And, like, for like, if you're like, just checking in to see how the revisions are going. I'm not so worried about that, but like, uh, it's very strategic about how am I using the free emails that I get to send out to them. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then after we get the stuff, so after we send a proposal and they agree, I'll email them an agreement through either like GoSigner or eSign, DocuSign, whatever it, it is, with a link in the email for the deposit for the production so like i try to minimize the like points of contact as much as possible and pretty much just having one email one email has you know the agreement and the deposit on there makes it super easy for them yeah so after we get the payment and the agreement signed then we actually start the whole production process for everything okay so and then with your agreement are you just using generally the same um contract for each client and then just adjusting based on the scope of the project and whatnot yeah, so we have we have like three main agreements that we use, and the main one's gonna be like, you know, excuse me, honestly, it's only two agreements that we really use with clients. It's gonna be like our general production agreement, which like would be you know our project scope of what we do, um, like out of our project scope the like the service like the service agreement, what they're gonna get, the deliverables, and all of that. Right. Um, and then the other one would be if someone's hiring us only for production, like no editing, like they just need us. Oh, okay. But those are really the only two agreements that we use. Uh, we will once in a while use like an editing agreement that we like let the client know, like, hey, our estimated cost in this is 500 bucks to edit this video based on $50 an hour. If we go over this, then we'll let you know, but this is the price. And then we'll get an initial deposit on before we start editing stuff for a client. Because okay. I've recently done something for somebody that, you know, they literally like were 75% in and he just like ghosted me. I like spent, you know, hours working on it, never heard back from the guy. So now it's just like, you know, we I'll take a deposit on editing and then on editing projects we we'll do watermarks on it, and then we also use uh, Dropbox with like the paid version. So we disable the download version on the. Okay. Uh, cool. Um, and then is that you? You have an agreement for sale, don't you, on your YouTube channel? Yeah. Is that the general production agreement? That's the same one that I like. Literally, the agreement I have on there is the same exact agreement that I use. Okay. Cool. Yeah, because like that's you know you know that's. Like for weddings, you know, I have all in one place. It's like I send them the proposal where it just has my three packages, but they can select it, sign the contract, and pay the retainer fee like all in one place. But then commercial clients, it's like, oh yeah, like let me put together this contract and send them an invoice, and it's just like kind of all over the place. So yeah, I mean, it's not. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you one of mine. Um, so. So this one's slightly modified just because we we updated it uh, since we launched this one. But this is pretty much what it looks like. You no know, scope of work. Uh, we say what we do, what they're gonna get. The agreement goes over. You know, Rodrigo will be working with this and that. Deliverables. Um, what's included. What the price is. What the payment terms are. Client manager direction. The timeline changes how we're able to use like, you know, your logo and use this for our, um, what do you call, 
portfolio oh yeah the conclusion and then where they can sign it okay cool um, but then like the only thing that we change in every shoot would be like for projects under fifteen hundred dollars now i take full payment up front i don't do like before i was doing like you know for this one it's like i was charging her 600 bucks to do this but i'm like okay 50 percent deposit so she's gonna pay me 300 dollars me yeah. what we do is 50 25 25 Oh, which makes sense like a six thousand dollar project to get three grand up front you know two grand after the day of the shoot and then two grand before we deliver it but for six hundred dollars i'm like i'm gonna go make somebody pay me six hundred dollars to three three payments so like i don't i don't have time for that shit like for me, yeah no, that makes sense so i'm like i think anything under 1500 bucks now i i want payment up front so like i'll change this here and then we change the deliverables of what like what they're doing and the project scope for you know each client but other yeah. than that this is the same agreement that we use and then we worked on some bigger things that like you know we needed to include the actual like production timeline of like hey week one to week two like we needed they, they needed more like a solidified like scheduled date of what's going to happen but yeah. for the most part, for everything, like that's the same contract I used to to give to Brown. So, yeah. yeah. And then, do you lay out like I've seen like in your behind the scenes? It seems like you work with a crew pretty consistently. Like for me, dude, like I work solo like ninety five percent of the time. Um, is that something that you lay out in your contract? Like I'm bringing a PA or I'm bringing an AC or any of that stuff? Or? Um, in some shoots I do. Um, and some shoots I don't. For the most part, I'm always gonna try to bring one extra person with me. Okay. Uh, but like, I'll let them know, like, you know, almost like, you know, on the bigger projects, I'd be like, I'll bring, I'll be like, you know, I will bring a crew with me. And yeah. like a crew might be, you know, two extra people or one extra person. Um, but I don't write like, for the most part, I try not to write like, what gear am I bringing? Who's coming with me? because I don't want to present that to the client. And then they're like, well, you don't need a DP. You don't need a gasser. You don't need a makeup artist. I don't need you to bring, you know, your prime lens. I'm like, you don't know what I need. Like, you don't go to the dentist. And you're like, well, I don't need anesthesia. I don't need you to use anything. <laughs> like, you're like, you let me do my job. I know what I need to do, what I, what I do. Like, for you to tell me to try to justify, justify the price doesn't work that way for me. So you try to just build that out, like, for this project, you're gonna be like, oh, I need a gaffer, I need a DP, whatever. You build out the budget before you send that proposal. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, like our projects are very, they're all kind of priced in the same area for what we do. So already have an idea of like, what is it that, how much is it gonna cost for me to do certain things, right? Um, so like one of the main guys I use, I pay him three fifty a day to come out and help me shoot. And then, you know, a PA, he might get, you know, depending on what his role is for the job, he might get, you know, a hundred bucks, he might get $150, depending on, on the day. So already have an idea of, you know, what that's gonna be like. And another thing for me was over this last year, I started making, cause like before I was in the same situation as you, that like I was doing everything myself. And it was great, I was making more money, but then I was also being more run down because like, you know, that means with, having to set up the lights, having to set up the camera, having to set up the audio, all these different things. There's always more little things that went wrong versus like I'll pay somebody money to come in and help me. It makes my life a lot easier. Like I'll make less money on this project, but I'm going to have a more successful project doing this. And that's going to lead me to having more successful projects along the way, leading me to having, you know, better quality products. So like the other video we just did for CRA, that was a, they gave me a $2,000 budget as well. But like, I paid 350 for my main guy. I paid 300 for another guy. I gave the chick that did the, like the behind the scenes for me. She wanted to intern, but like I felt bad cause she drove down to Hollywood. I gave her a hundred bucks. I gave my other guy, um, my other buddy gave that like was helping PA. I gave him 200. The other guy, uh, Max is another PA. I gave him a hundred bucks. End of the day, for a shoot that I was working on for like almost two weeks, I probably made like six hundred bucks on that. You know, and it was fine with me, but it's one of those things like I love like working on the set. So like I had a crew of seven people with me. 
for this, but I love that day. Like being yeah. in, working with the crew of people, doing something that I love. I only literally had to worry about like directing and making sure the shoot was on schedule. Like that was fine with me. But like if I took the two thousand dollars and had to do everything by myself, it would have been a fucking shitty ass day. Right? So like Yeah, it's exhausting. Yeah, it is exhausting. So like, you know, I'd rather work with, you know, with more people and make less money and have more, you know, fun yeah. doing it. Because like, you know, right now there isn't a lot of work. And, you know, it's one of those things that I should be more conscious about, like, you know, I should be trying to do more and keep more money, but it's one of those things like I'd rather have a better time and a better production and bring in on more people to help me do those things. So I don't have to, I know that if I put him behind the camera, that he's going to capture what I need and I can focus on a bigger picture of the project. Yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense. So like in the case where you have seven people, are you shooting at all or are you just directing at that point? For the most part, like this past week, I was directing. There's like one or two parts. So like there was something specific that I wanted to capture. And I'd be like, hey, let me take the camera and I'll shoot this. But I have a director's monitor that I use on shoots now. So like, you know, he was filming stuff. I was there with the director's monitor. The client was right next to me. And like, you know, we're just going over what we needed. And I'm just like letting him know, you know, like, hey, can you go a little bit lower can you pen right or whatever the situation is um and there's like you know one, one or two shots that i wanted to run in with and i was like hey i'm looking for something very specific i'm going to capture the shot myself yeah um, but for me i would like to only direct i don't like i don't want to be like a dp it's not something that uh you know i love shooting but if I got to direct, that's where I really want, that's what I want to do, like, no long term. So I'd rather do that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Cool. Um, I don't know if I have any other questions right now, but I appreciate you sharing so much with me, dude. Sure, bro. My pleasure, man. I love, like, just the fact that, like, you reached out. Um, you know, I really appreciate that.